Okay. Welcome back, everybody, to our final lecture for this course, BC 308, Revelation and Daniel. We are starting off in Revelation chapter 22. We're going to read through it and look at what John has to tell us as um, in his final, uh, final portion of his vision. So let's read verses 1 through 5, please. Revelation 22. Revelation chapter 22, verses 1 through 5. Somebody. And he showed me a pure river. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, uh, clear as crystal, proceeding from the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the middle of, this, of its streets, and on either side of the river was the tree of life, which bore twelve fruits, each tree yielding its fruits every month. The leaves of the tree were, were for the healing of the nations. And uh, there, there shall be no more curse, but the, th but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. I can read verses 4 and 5 also, Kung. And they shall see his face, and his name shall be on their foreheads. There shall be no night there. They need no land nor light of the sun, for the Lord God gives them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. Wonderful. Amen. So John is seeing in, in this portion here the throne of God, and he's seeing you know, what he calls as the river of life. Uh, the river that's flowing uh, with the water of life flowing from the throne of God. Now, whether it is what literal water as we know it, or whether it's just a flow of the glory and presence of God into, you know, the city and everything there, that is there, uh, we don't know. But John is describing it as a water of life. I'm seeing this pure river. Of the water of life is crystal and then he's seeing this tree call he calls it the tree of life bearing 12 fruits one tree 12 fruits the assumption here is 12 different fruits otherwise if it was all the same fruit you would have said bearing fruits but this one tree bearing 12 different fruits um, and uh, the leaves of this tree of life is for the health of the nations. So that's interesting. So again, uh, you know, we can obviously ask a lot of questions. Why, you know, first of all, one tree bearing 12 fruits is not how we understand things today in our world, right? Every tree bears its own kind of fruit. But the tree of life bearing 12 fruits, we can ask the question, why 12? We'd say 12. Is 12 the number 12 uh, in scripture is an expression of God's government? I mean, this is God's uh, God establishing his rule, his dominion, his sovereignty, God's government. Number 12. So we could, you know, we could think along those lines, but again, all of this is just our thinking. The tree of life, 12 fruits, leaves. For the health of the nations, why would that be necessary? Or is all of this just, you know, representing to us that the very presence of God and the very government of God is going to take care of life and health? You know, so whether this is figurative, this water of life and the tree of life is figurative in prophetic sense of the very life of God and the government of God, making sure that. Everyone is, you know, is, is, is in perfect, in a state of perfection, state of perfect health. Um, rather than, you know, thinking of, okay, people are going to go to this tree, pick those fruits, eat it, or they're going to take those leaves, eat the leaves in order to be healthy. That, that would not be necessary logically because he's already said in the previous chapter, in chapter 21, that in this new earth, there's no pain, there's no sickness, there's no sorrow, none of that. So obviously it's not as a remedy, right, that people are going to go and eat the fruit and use the leaves. So this passage there then 
uh, you know, it's 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 open for either you know to take it either way. Uh, I, I would look at it more as an expression of the very presence of God and the gov the very sovereign presence of God, making sure that everybody is, is in that state of perfection. God exerting His influence, His government, to making sure that we are all perfect uh, in life and health and so on. And uh, his own name, verse 4 and 5, his own name, his own presence is on us. That means we are literally living in the glory presence of God. We are literally being sustained by the glory presence of God. Um, his light, his life, his you know, health, everything comes from him. Right? And uh, so that's verses 1 to 5. I feel that's what it represents and conveys to us. Right? So we shouldn't get so worried about, hey, is there going to be a literal river flowing through and one tree having 12 fruits and everybody has to go and eat of it physically? I don't think that's what it's signifying. Uh, for me, it's more of a prophetic picture of the very presence and glory of God taking care of everything. Let's go from verses 6 to 11, please. Then he said to me, Son of man, these words are faithful and true. And the Lord God of holy prophets sent his angel to show his servants the things which must shortly take place. Behold, I am coming quickly. Blessed is he who keeps the words of verses the prophecy of this book. Now I, John, saw and heard these things. And when I heard and saw, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel who showed me these things. Then he said to me, see that you do not do that, mm. for I am your fellow servant mm. and of your brethren, brethren the prophets, and of those who keep the words of this book, worship God. Mm. Shall I continue? Yes, till verse 11, please. And he said to me, do not see the words of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. He who is just, let him be, he who, he who is unjust, let him be unjust still. He who is filthy, let him be filthy still. He who is righteous, let him be righteous still. He who is holy, let him be holy still. Mm -hmm. So, verse 6 to 11, John is obviously overwhelmed by this whole experience, of all that he has seen and heard, and especially about new heavens and new earth. Because, you know, like, this is something is never imagined, never seen. Not there's nothing on this earth to compare to that. Completely overwhelmed by what he has seen, as described in chapters 21, 22, new heavens, new earth, new Jerusalem, the glory of God, like to see perfection. You know, we can only imagine, like try to imagine perfection. You know, what would it look like? And John is seeing perfection. He is seeing something where it's so glorious. God himself is overwhelming everything. And, you know, so John is like, oh. And uh, he falls down to worship this angel and, and this angel uh, whom, this messenger, the, the word translated here as angel, but he's this messenger. And um, and uh, this angel says, you know, don't, don't worship me. I'm just one of your fellow servants now of your brethren, the prophets. So this was an Old Testament prophet who has been, in this particular stage, has been speaking to John. Of course, there are different angels, and he's seen all of that. The elder is speaking to him. He is, this one is a, a prophet, and he says, I'm one of your brethren, the prophets, verse 9. Uh, so this must have been one of the Old Testament prophets speaking to John. And uh, he says, John, the prophecy that we have given to you don't seal it, meaning don't keep it hidden. It's kind of interesting. Daniel, Daniel, close it up. Don't, you know. John, don't seal it. Keep it open. Let everybody hear about it. Let everybody read about it. The time is at hand, verse 10. Again, we have to understand. This is God speaking through his servant. And when God says time is at hand, it's from his perspective. 
for us, we look back and say, hey, 2,000 years have gone since John wrote these things and opened it up for us. What do you mean time is at hand? Well, from God's perspective, God is saying, this is very short. It's going to happen soon. I'm coming to wrap things up. And so in that, you, you and I, or you know, whoever's reading these things, you make up your mind. Are you going to continue being unjust? Are you going to continue being filthy? Are you going to stay righteous and stay holy? You make up your mind. This revelation has been unsealed. It's openly declared, nothing hidden. Time is short. You make up your mind. Are you going to stay unjust? Are you going to stay in your sin? Are you going to stay in holiness? Are you going to stay in righteousness? No in between. In the light of this revelation, the light of the prophecy that God has given. You can either just, you have to be on one side. Either you're going to stay filthy, unjust, wicked, or you're going to choose to walk the ways of God. God has said, I've said what I wanted to say, and I'm saying things of it, time is very short. Then we come to the final section, starting with verse 12, where the Lord is affirming, I'm coming quickly, get ready. Right? So let's pick up from verse 12 to verse 21, please. Luke, I am coming soon. My reward is with me, and I will give each person according to what they have done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes, that they may have the right to the tree of life, and may go through the gates into the city. Verse 15, someone. But outside are dogs and sorcerers and sexually immoral and murderers and idolaters and whoever loves and practices a lie. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, the bright and morning star, and the spirit and the bride say, come. Let him who hears say, come. And let him who thirsts come, whoever desires, let him take the water of life freely. I warn everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book. If anyone adds to them, God will add to him the plagues described in this book. And if anyone takes away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God will take away his share in the tree of life and in the holy city, which are described in this book. He who testified to this thing says, Surely I'm coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with all. Amen. 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 So the book concludes with the Lord saying, I am coming quickly. I'm coming quickly. Again, we have to understand it from the Lord's perspective, right? When he says, I'm coming quickly, meaning for God, this, you know, whatever 2,000 years that I've already elapsed from a human standpoint is really nothing. Right? So God is saying, I'm com the Lord is saying, I'm coming quickly. I'm the beginning, the end. I started everything. I'm the one who's going to wrap everything up. I'm at the start of time and I'm at the end of time. And once again, we see the whole, you know, separation. Those whose names are in the book of life, those whose names are not written in the book of life. And verse 16, this message, John, take it to all the churches. Meaning, I know this is to be hidden. God's people everywhere need to know about it. And once again, Jesus identifies himself. And he identifies very intentionally and very purposefully of him being a descendant of David. I am the root and the offspring of David, meaning this is the same Jesus who walked the earth. You know, I'm not talking about some other Jesus. This is the Jesus 
who came in the lineage of David, who walked on the earth. And this is the one who is the eternal bright and morning star. The one who always shines forever. He's eternal. So there is the eternal side of him. He's a bright and morning star. And there is this human side of him. He's the one who came as a descendant of David. Verse 17. The spirit and the bride say come. The Holy Spirit and the bride, the church, God's people, are saying come. So now the focus is on the bride, meaning the church. John is, as, as far as John's time. Spirit and bride are saying, come. So you can understand it like this. The church that is truly empowered by the Holy Spirit will be a church that is living in the expectation, living in the anticipation, living in the recognition of the coming of the Lord Jesus. Because the Spirit and the Bride say, come. And they are looking forward, awaiting, uh, anticipating His coming. And then there's a warning there not to tamper with the, the words of this book, but to leave it as it is. This, these are God's words. And uh, this is the prophecy is given for us to understand. And surely I come, I'm coming quickly, are the closing words of the Lord. So, we've journeyed through the book of Revelation. Um, I'll just quickly run through this. So really, if you look at the book of Revelation, it's an amazing book, and it's, uh, it's something that we can understand in the light of the other books, especially in the light of what we read in Daniel. So just to do a quick review, a run through of Revelation. Revelation chapter 1, uh, chapter 1 is John seeing the Lord, chapters 2 and 3, message to the seven churches, chapters 4 and 5, a vision of heaven in the future, where there's worship going on, so the saints are there in heaven, chapter 6 onward, chapter 6 through 19, is what will happen on the earth during the seven years of tribulation, chapter 6 through 90. And in between there are some, of course, like we said, some parenthetical passages or some retrospective passages, things like that. But it starts off in chapters 6, 7, and 8, uh, uh, looking at the seven uh, seals of judgment, we are seeing 144,000 Jews uh, who are serving God, starting from the early part of the tribulation. And we're also seeing a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of uh, worship, uh, prayer rising up. That's chapter 8. Then we transition into the seven trumpets, uh, starting uh, uh, in chapter 8, 9. Uh, the trumpets are sounding and those judgments are being poured out. Chapter 10, uh, we see the um, uh, the announcement. Uh, it's, it's more of like a parenthetical chapter where John is made to eat a little book saying, look, there's more to prophesy. Chapters 11, 12, and 13 are interesting because they deal with the second half of the tribulation. So chapter 11 is the midpoint. And chapters 11, 12, and 13 have information that, that starts in the middle of the tribulation going to the end of the tribulation. Chapter 11 talks about the two witnesses. Chapter 12 talks about Satan going against Israel for the last second half of the tribulation. Chapter 13 is talking about the Antichrist and the false prophet and what they're going to be doing. Chapter 14 is when we have these five angels making announcements, bringing message, messages to people all over the world, warning them about various things, you know, warning them. Uh, one angel is preaching the gospel. One angel is telling people, don't receive the mark of the beast. One angel is announcing that Babylon is going to fall. 
uh, one angel is talking about um, the great harvest of souls and the fifth angel is announcing the great judgment to come. Chapter 15, there's preparation for the final set of uh, bowls, judgment, bowl judgments. Chapter 16 and 17 is, uh, chapter 16 is basically those, those um, final set of seven bowl judgments. But in the sixth bowl judgment, that's, you know, like you say, the ringing bell, uh, the start of the, the preparation for the Battle of Armageddon. In that sixth bowl, the river Euphrates dries up, then our nations are beginning to move towards Jerusalem. And while there's this whole mobilization of the armies of the earth against Israel and against Jerusalem, two major things happen. Chapter 17, there is a collapse of this religious system that controlled the people for many, many centuries, and which was accentuated by the false prophet coming on the sea. And Chapter 18 is the collapse of the great city, Babylon, talking about the global, a global economic system collapses. So it happens right before, you know, the nations are mobilizing for this big battle and there's this collapse of these two things. Chapter 19, in heaven there's a marriage supper of the Lamb. As soon as that is over, the Lord comes. Battle of Armageddon, everything is wrapped up. Chapter 20, Satan is put away. The Antichrist, the false prophet, are sent to the lake of fire. Satan and his demons are put in the bottomless pit. 1,000 years reign of Christ. Chapters 21 and 22. New heavens and a new earth. Got it, everybody? So, book of Revelation. Um, let's do a similar run through of Daniel. If you jump back to the book of Daniel, just the prophetic chapters, and then I'll take the questions. And I am seeing Abraham has typed something. Um, so Daniel chapter two again uh, is is, is uh, just to just to review recap. So Daniel, like we said, chapter two is like an outline for the whole book. He sees actually Nebuchadnezzar has the vision, and Daniel interprets it with with the help of God. But he sees this big image, gold silver, brass, thigh, uh, feet of iron, and then, uh, sorry, legs of iron, feet and toes of iron mixed with clay. Right? He sees that whole thing. And the initial understanding, as God gave Daniel, is each of these represent kingdoms or empires. And uh, finally, there's going to be an, uh, uh, a kingdom which comes from heaven, which is established on the earth, which when we read Revelation 20, that's the kingdom. The kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ is going to be established a thousand years. Right? So that's what Daniel saw, uh, Daniel chapter 2. But that formed the basis of what was what is un being unveiled to us in the rest of the book of Daniel. Daniel chapter 4 and chapter 5, we see how Daniel foretells the transition from the Babylonians to the Medes and then to the Persians. Then... Daniel chapter 7 is where we begin to see more details coming forth. In Daniel 7, uh, the vision is now given to him in the form of, you know, beasts or animals and, and uh, strange animals. And each of these are representing different world empires. And for the first time in Daniel 7, we are introduced to this little horn or this strange person who starts speaking blasphemies against God and so on. And in Daniel 7 also we get the amazing uh, insight into the future kingdom where the saints will rule with the Son of Man, the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Daniel 8 zeroes in very particularly on two kingdoms that would come, uh, which was the, the the Persians and then the Greeks. So he's talking. We're seeing you know two animals fighting, uh, the the ram and the goat, male goat, the Persian, the Greek, and then he goes into the details about the Greek Empire, how it's going to grow and expand, and how it's going to be broken into four parts, and how from one of those parts this little horn is going to come. So which again is is, is very interesting. Daniel eight, 
Daniel chapter 9 is uh, again an amazing chapter because in the end of the chapter he gets into so many details he talks about this 490 year period um, where the the first 483 years he clearly says from the time the decree is given to go rebuild Jerusalem till the Messiah comes what's going to happen and then the last seven years which is the Daniel 70th week which is what we see in the book of Revelation and he gives us all those details there Daniel chapter 11 is more of a, a near-term prophecy the talking about all the kings of the north and the south that would come and how they would you know deal with each other and then towards the second half of or towards the end of chapter 11 is when he begins to point towards the the Antichrist and how things will happen during his time which we explained uh, uh, the king from the north uh, the, the south Egypt and the king from the north Syria and uh, news from the east and the north uh, alarming this so basically that's a picture of what will happen in the build up towards the battle of Armageddon chapter 12 is a look Daniel chapter 12 is a look into what will happen post the tribulation the uh, the new temple the, the millennial temple that would eventually be set up the transition into that and also Daniel chapter 12 is very remarkable because it points out two important signs which Daniel wrote remember this is Old Testament uh, several hundred years even before Christ but he said uh, the angel said to Daniel knowledge will increase people will run to and fro these are two signs of the end and sure enough we are living in those days and times when knowledge has exploded and people are traveling all over the world you know, there's so much of travel as never before but the angel told Daniel in Daniel's time these are the two signs I want to give you about when these prophecies will be fulfilled and we are definitely living in a time foretold in Daniel chapter 12 okay so any questions on Daniel and Revelation please and then we'll take up other general questions after that any questions on Daniel and Revelation or Revelation and Daniel Okay, so there were two announcements I wanted to make um, and then we will take up questions. So there are two things I want to talk to us about today, uh, which we will roll out after the graduation, that is after May, we'll roll it out. So you'll receive details by email. Um, one, uh, as and, and we, I have mentioned the, both of these before, but I'm just talking about it again. One is what we are referring to as um, uh, church planting accelerator program which is if there is again uh, I want to do this in a very right way I don't want to seem like <laughs> we're trying to enlist people to join APC or be a part of uh, APC that's not the intent but for those of you who have finished three years with us and please remember to finish all the exams and assessments finish all of that and those who graduate for three years from APC Bible College, uh, we some of you will be all you know already have your ministries. You may already be working with certain ministries, and we don't want to disturb any of that. Continue and do whatever God has called you to do, and be blessed that. And uh, we just want you to be very fruitful. Now, some of you may feel like you want to work with APC, whichever part of the world you are in, and maybe you may want to start a church or you're pioneering a church already or you may want to start a ministry you know which could be I don't know whatever God has called you to do in a city or in a rural setting or wherever so we want to give that opportunity to people uh, if you feel in your heart you want to work with APC and for us also that's part of our hearts desire which is to pour into people and help them uh, you know start the churches the ministries and so on so that's the church planting accelerator program. It's called church planting, but it's not exclusively church planting. It could, all, it all can also include any other kind of ministry that you 
uh, that you want to start, which is obviously going to touch people's lives. So um, you will receive an emailer. Uh, there, there's a simple application form that you, uh, I, I shouldn't say it's simple. It's a detailed application form where you're going, we will ask you to share your plan, the cost estimate, uh, you know, how much money you need, how are you going to, a three-year plan, how are you going to grow the ministry, all of that. It's something we've we've, we've looked at in uh, uh, our course on church and ministry administration. So so you need, we, we want you to think about that. So you fill up that form and send it back to us. And if you feel like, yeah, this is, you know, this is very genuine and you really, you know, you really have a call from God to do that, then we definitely want to come alongside and back that up financially and spiritually. You know, journey with you, help you to start. Now, whether you call that ministry by a name, like all people search something, or you call it anything else, that doesn't matter. The name doesn't matter, because what we want to see is the work of God's kingdom go on. So that's for those of you who want to start a ministry and work with us, uh, which were part of the world. The second thing is what we're referring to as Partners and Ministers Fellowship International, PAMFI. Uh, this is more of a uh, a fellowship body where anybody uh, can be a part of and our goal is to provide fellowship as ministers of God. So it doesn't matter what our calling is, some may be pastors, some may be evangelists, some may be prophets, some may be apostles, uh, some may be teachers, whatever your ministry is, or you may be doing something completely different in the ministry, but you want a place where you can connect and for us this is especially important for those who have graduated from Bible college uh, because our work is not over once you graduate. That's when the work really starts because you're going to be out in the ministry doing whatever God's called you to do, working. You may have your own ministry. You may be working with somebody else. All that's fine. But to be able to be there in the back, uh, providing you with equipping, ongoing equipping, ongoing support spiritually, uh, on, on, you know, and be there for fellowship. That's what the Pastors and Ministers Fellowship International is about. And so again, you'll receive an email on that later in the year, um, inviting you to be a part of it if you want to. There's no compulsion. Both these are just, just ideas and optional things uh, that we want to make available to our students uh, so that whoever feels they want to be a part of it, they can be a part of it. And our goal is to really you know, be there to support you beyond your graduation post you know whatever god calls you to do okay so you'll receive emails on that and you know there's no compulsion or anything to be a part of it it's just opportunities for making available and if you feel that to in your heart to be a part of it you're most welcome okay so i will take up questions uh, any questions here before we close uh, abraham if someone misses the graduation date, is it possible to come later? I'm trying to get the visa, but maybe it can come on 14th May. Uh, 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 I mean, you're welcome to come anytime you want. Um, but, uh, of course, the graduation will happen on Sunday, May 7th. So, um, you, you know, you can... Uh, um, you, you, if you miss the graduation, you know, your, your certificates, everything will be kept for you. So it's not a problem. Now, if you want to come and visit us anytime, you're most welcome. Uh, just let us know in advance because, you know, sometimes we may be traveling out locally. I mean, uh, some, some of us may be traveling here and there uh, on ministry and so on. So, but, you know, you're most welcome to come and uh, let us know. Okay. Any other questions? Any comments? Any anything you want to clarify? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. I, I want to confirm: is graduation and ordination the same, or there are two separate things? So what we uh, no. So graduation is a completion of your course here at APC. So it's not uh, there won't be an ordination at that time, but on the Saturday before. So the graduation happens on Sunday. But on the Saturday before, what we normally do is for all the students who come in uh, here, we lay hands and pray and uh, 
over each of those students. So that happens on a Saturday evening, the day before. Right. So again, we don't call it formally as an ordination, but if you want to look at it that way, yeah, it's it's really like we are praying over you and blessing you in the ministry God has called you to do. Uh, so that we do on Saturday. Uh, for those of you online on graduation day, Sunday, we will pray for everybody. You know, so we will pray similarly. We'll pray on on uh, on Sunday. Of course, you'll be online. You'll be in different parts of the world but we will pray for you from the service for you. But the laying on of hands and praying happens on Saturday evening for those who come in person. Uh, but we, we don't necessarily call it ordination, uh, but we just, uh, we, we, uh, we, we, you know, that, is, that essentially is what happens. We lay hands and pray. So it's on Saturday. Um, uh, it's a service that happens Saturday evening, 5.30, to 7, 5.30 p.m. Saturday. We start yes, at 5.30. Yes, sir. I, I'm saying this because uh, with the role that I'm playing here in Vietnam, mm. because some people call me pastor and I've not been ordained into that office. I, mm. I'm still trying to pray and find out my, my calling here, though I'm doing something like that. So I'm not quite happy with the, having the name without that ordination backing up. So I just wanted to be very sure that, is that okay for now? I, I wanted to clarify this. Mm. Um, so, most important, most important, you are ordained by God. John 15, verse 16, Jesus said, you haven't chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bear fruit. So first, you're ordained by God. Second, man recognizes it. And man, you know, lays hands and prays and, you know, publicly ordains. That's a nice thing if that happens. That's a good thing if that happens. Um, uh, but if it doesn't happen, it doesn't mean you're not ordained. Right? You're ordained because God appointed you, right? So that appointment, so, so that is more important, the fact that the Lord has appointed you to do something. It's good that man recognizes you and maybe gives you a piece of paper that says they laid hands on you and prayed for you. But whether that piece of paper happens or not, that's not the real issue. The real issue is, has the Lord called you and ordained you, right? Uh, also Acts 20, 28, Paul says, the Holy Spirit has appointed you as an overseer or as a spiritual leader. The Holy Spirit has appointed you. That's most important. So if that has happened on your life and somebody calls you pastor or prophet or apostle, then perfectly fine, you know, because God has appointed you and man recognizes that, that's okay. Uh, if you have additionally an ordination letter, that's, that's, <laughs> that's nice. But uh, having an ordination letter without God appointing us is of no value, right? Okay, but thank uh, you so much. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Uh, Christopher, it'll be at our Bible College campus, Cornerstone. Uh, yeah. Saturday, May 6th, 5.30 p.m. at our Bible College campus. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay. So um, this is it. Um, we will pray and close. Um, you know, you all of you have my email ID. I think I'll just type it here in the chat if, if you want. Yeah. That's my email ID. Anytime, you're welcome to drop me an email. Um, you know, if you need any help or guidance or anything, and then of course we can schedule a call or something if if it's needed, and uh, you know, so be in touch even after your graduation. Christopher, you have a question? Ah, uh, yes, uh, just a very quick question, Pastor. I, uh, you know, we uh, when we did the first year, uh, I don't think there was any recording of the actual. Uh, um, uh, you know, classes uh, for the first year. 
and it i think it pertained to us because the second year i think it started so we don't have a recording of that and um is it possible for for this batch uh, uh can we access the first year of the, the next batch as in uh, you know what uh, what has been recorded in the in the subsequent year uh so that you know we can refer back to that material is there any way to do that um yeah it's already available so if you go to our apc bible college apc bible college yeah so if you go to youtube.com slash apc bible college um you can access all the recordings. So um, our first year, for example, the first year courses that are being taught, that were taught last fall and the spring, they're already there online. So you could, and everything is open. So you could access any course, anything, and it will be similar for the future. Meaning um, you could, all the lectures, all the every every semester lectures will be available freely uh, on our Bible College uh, website. So anybody is welcome to access the video recordings. The only thing the video recordings obviously don't have is they don't have the PDFs and the files. But at any time uh, you want to access those files, you can connect to the. I mean, so obviously our content is being updated every year. So every time we teach, uh, for most courses, we will update the content based, you know, uh, obviously for, you know. So um, if you want to connect to any course, just connect to the Google Classroom or connect to the e-learning and you can take the notes from there. So you're free to do it um, anytime. And uh, what we will be doing, of course, is we will be emailing the course, um, uh, the, the classroom class codes, and obviously e-learning is open all the time. So you could sign up and just feel free to use it. Right, thank you. And just another, just another question, just on the, on the tree of life, because the tree of life was uh, uh, mentioned in, in Genesis as well as in, in Revelation. So we just want to try and understand um, what was the significance of that. Um, and uh, in both cases, I think, uh, um, I mean, the tree of life was was accessible to Adam and Eve. It is only the tree of knowledge, as I understand, that was, mm. that was not uh, permitted. So what is the significance of that? You know, it's like the beginning and the end kind of, you know, uh, is mm. there any significance? Just wanted to understand that. So in, in the Bible, uh, the tree of life, represents health and longevity right so that's what it stands for health and longevity meaning uh, unending life and perfect health so tree of life is a picture of uh, health and longevity so even in in in, in proverbs and so if you look at it like in the middle of the bible and i'm just trying to recall this uh, i think it's Proverbs 12 4. let me just uh, please check this verse and then confirm it um um Uh, I'm not getting it in a, just off my mouth. Um, anyway, yes, sometimes it'll come back to me. Yes. Anyway, uh, uh, um, uh, so the tree of life, and uh, just not getting that verse from Proverbs. Anyway, uh, oh yeah, uh, the tree of life, uh, and you'll see it in the book of Proverbs as well. Proverbs 11.30, Peron is saying Proverbs 11 verse 30, yeah. So you will see uh, uh, Tree of Life, even in the book of Proverbs, is used to represent health, strength, longevity. So Genesis, Proverbs, Revelation, Tree of Life, a picture of health and longevity. Now we know in the garden, there were two physical trees, now we are seeing that tree of life in Revelation 22. And again, it's in the context of uh, health and healing to the nations, meaning to all the people. You can imagine millions of people, maybe billions of people in the new earth. And the tree of life is giving health to all of them. Um, so that's what it means. So if you say, what is the meaning of the tree of life? It represents health and 
laundry with your unending life. Now, what I was trying to explain from Revelation 22 is you can't imagine everybody going and physically eating 12 fruits and taking the leaves. So I was saying that, that that's more of a representation of God's presence, bringing health and longevity or eternal life, unending life to everybody. Yeah. Is that okay, Chris? Yeah. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Okay. Just looking at the comments here. Let's see now. Um, okay. Thank you. Thank you. And then, okay, Abraham, are we going to have access to all our video after graduation? So, um, so what happens actually is uh, we archive the old uh, uh, Google Classrooms, we archive them, and in the e-learning portal also we archive them. That means they are no longer publicly available, right? But if you have uh, signed up on the e-learning portal, even though it's archived, you will, you know, it's 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 as a course that you have done, then you will have access to it. Uh, but I think what may be more useful is for you to have access to the current courses. I mean, the same course being taught currently. Now, so let me clarify. But all the lectures on YouTube will always be there. So you can always go and on the YouTube channel, you can always go and listen to them. Plus, you will always have access to the new, the course, the same courses are being done over and over again. So you'll always have those access to those courses, whether you want to sign up in Classroom, Google Classroom, or on e-learning, or on YouTube, of course, it's, it'll be available for free. So uh, you can always do that. Uh, and I would always recommend listening to the most latest one because you know our knowledge and understanding keeps growing and we are able to share a little bit more each time. Okay. Thank you. Rose, will the Google Classroom that we have access now be open that we log into? Tech learning all throughout these three years, every now and then. I mean, you can. So the classrooms, uh, which you, so important thing is uh, if you, um, uh, so you've got to stay connected to the classroom. Uh, but that's one thing I'm not very sure of, which is after we archive them, but you're still connected to the classroom, whether you as a student will still have access to it. Does anybody? Um, so if you if you if you look at your previous semesters, uh, are you all able to see your previous semester classrooms and content? Yes, all the videos are available. Okay, all right. So it means that so long as you don't uh, c come out of that classroom, if you remain you, with that same Gmail ID, you stay connected to those enrolled in those classes. Um, that content will remain available to you uh, even after we archive them, right? But if you unenroll from those classes, then you, uh, you know, uh, uh, you will lose uh, access to it. Okay. So if you want to have access to it, you can stay connected, and so on. Okay. Good. Any other questions? Pastor, all the videos are on YouTube, readily available. Like you can have them uh, together. Mm -hmm. All the videos are there. Even if you are not attached to it, you can easily access YouTube and find out just with the topic. Every lecture is uh, readily available. So mm -hmm. just wanted to inform Rose. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So all the um, recordings are available. And hopefully these recordings will get better and better. And when we set up nice classrooms, we can improve. You know, you won't be seeing these pictures at the back. <laughs> You'll have some nice backgrounds. Anyway, how we'll get better with time. Okay. So I think we're done. Um, I'll put up your assessments and you can work through it. Uh, of course, your assessments will cover everything. Daniel, Revelation, there will be, uh, I think there will be 10 questions, 10 marks each, or something like that. Anyway, I'll put it up. Or, sorry, maybe 
yeah, 10 marks each or something. All right. Anyway, so let's wrap up. Let's close in prayer. And somebody could uh, pray with us and dismiss us. Hello. We are once again most grateful and thankful unto you for this real privilege that you have granted us to share in the ministry of Pastor Ashes and the entire faculty. Father, we want to thank you for the impact and the influence APC Bible College has brought on our lives throughout our three-year course. Father, we want to thank you for the many lessons that we have picked from them. And we want to thank you for, for their lives. And we appreciate that they have poured their lives into us. Father, we pray that as we bring our entire course to a close, Daddy, may you help us so that we will live our lives as fashioned and as impacted and as influenced by the values and principles of your kingdom that has been transmitted through APC to us in the name of Jesus. I pray that, oh God, grant us the grace, grant us the strength, and grant us the ability to live our lives and our ministry to a higher, a higher height in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Father, we pray that cause us to be a glory and cause us to be a light that will shine and that will bring glory to your name and glory to the APC Bible College in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray for all my course mates that you continue to sustain and grant them your grace in their ministries and let them be a blessing, a blessing wherever they find themselves in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you and we bless you and we honor you for this great opportunity that you have given to us. And we pray that you continue to open other doors for us in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Thank you, everyone. God bless you. And um, hope to meet all of you in person someday. But stay Amen. strong. Thank you, yeah. Pastor. Thank you very much. Thank you. Stay strong. Do a good work for the Lord. Glorify Jesus. God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye now. Thank you, Pastor. God bless you so much. Thank you. God bless you. Bye. God bless each one. Bye now. Bye. God bless you. Thank you, everyone. God bless. Thank you. Bye now. God bless you. God bless. Thank you, everyone. God bless. Bye now. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, thank you, God bless, bye now, God bless you, bye now.